a bucket list destination for international tourists and locals alike, Jeju Island is a breathtaking and magical destination just a quick plane ride away from Seoul. In this video spanning 3 days and 3 nights, I'll be showing you some of the best places to visit and explore around the island, restaurants to go and eat at, and of course, it wouldn't be a trip in South Korea without recommending some of the best cafes as well. So come along with me and let's go out and explore Jeju together. We start our first day with a breakfast straight from the waters of Jeju. The seafood served in this restaurant are harvested by the Jeju Henyo, women divers who do not use oxygen masks while underwater. The side dishes are served right away and I mean right as you sit. Coming from Seoul, I can tell you that the only familiar banchan here was the kimchi, so it was very fun trying these new side dishes out. We ordered their famous abalone porridge. It came out very hot and fresh, taking an almost green tea-like color. Take a spoonful of rice with an abalone on top and try it out for yourself. It's not that fishy. No, I think it's not fishy at all. No. The porridge itself has quite a mild taste, so don't expect to be punched with a lot of flavor. However, I do recommend trying spoonfuls with different banchan on top as well so you can get a different flavor profile each time. Overall, I think this dish is a good breakfast option to ease into your day while still trying Jeju seafood. We had a very filling breakfast and it was time to walk it all off in Songsan Ilchulbong. Songsan Ilchulbong is a tough cone resulting from a volcanic eruption around 5,000 years ago. This was actually the number one location I wanted to visit in Jeju and it was the first thing that came to mind when I thought about the island. While you're on your way to the summit, you will happen upon this store and don't be shy, go ahead and buy these adorable Jeju orange hats, commonly seen worn by children and, well, tourists like me on the island. To get to the top, you will have to walk up lots of staircases, so wear comfortable shoes. However, the views you do get while walking up are completely worth it. Once you're at the top, you will understand why this is a part of UNESCO's World Natural Heritage List. And take all the time you need to process this once-in-a-lifetime site. After taking in the marvel that was the crater, it's time to walk back down. And don't forget to look up and around you. The top staircases offer a panoramic view of the rest of mainland Jeju. Before we move from Songsan Il Tubong, I also cannot stress enough just how beautiful it is here at dawn. If you can, wake up early and get here as soon as the sun rises. It's no wonder why Songsan Il Tubong is also affectionately nicknamed the Sunrise Peak. Just a short walk away from the base sits a Jeju Island gift shop. It can be quite easy to miss since their doorway is on the side of the building overlooking the peak, but look for an orange inflatable and a gift shop sign. You're probably gonna spend more than you want to admit here. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, but these trinkets are super cute. And hey, if you already bought yourself an orange hat, might as well buy these too is what I say. We were starting to get hungry again and wanted a sugar recharge from the walking, so we headed over to order Patisserie and Cafe, just a few blocks away. This cafe has tons of different and interesting pastries to try alongside their drinks. However, what really stole the show for me was the exterior. 
I can confidently say that this is probably one of the best views I will ever get in any cafe in my entire life. Seeing this view through a camera lens cannot fully encapsulate just how majestic Songsan Iltubong and the surrounding seas are. You seriously need to come here and see it for yourself. And while doing so, why not sit or lay down on a comfy bed? That's right, this cafe has converted bed frames and mattresses into a seating area outside for its customers. So breathe in the fresh air and enjoy a relaxing time with your drink and dessert. Also, while you're in Korea, you might want to do as the Koreans do, and that is take lots of photos. There are actually photo spots all over the cafe grounds, so snap a picture for your memories. Feeling energized, we took a bus to our last attraction for the day, Biche Banco, also named in French, but I will only pronounce the Korean version due to my lack of confidence in French pronunciation. In any case, this tucked away space was once an old bunker, now remodeled into an immersive art exhibition for everyone to enjoy. You can book online or buy tickets in person. However, one thing to note is that Biche Banco doesn't seem to be open year round, so make sure to search in advance in case they're closed for the day you're going. They cycle through different artists throughout the year, but I felt like I had the best luck this time because they happened to be showcasing Monet as one of the artists for that day. There were also other equally awe-inspiring artists with varying art styles. There were artists like Camille Pissarro, Paul Signac, Marc Chagall, and Paul Clay, just to name a few. Their works were being projected in time to the beats and corresponding emotions of classical music and was very mesmerizing to see. With the sun setting and the closing time for buzzes nearing, we had a peaceful ride back to the pension we were staying in. By the way, if you've enjoyed this video so far and have learned something new about Jeju, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It will really help me create more videos like this for you guys in the future. Thanks so much! We decided to order Korean delivery food, with my order being spam and kimchi, served on top of a bed of warm rice and a side of hot spicy soup. Indeed, a perfect way to end our first day of adventure. Good morning everyone, it is day 2 of our trip here to Jeju. I have my halabong hat again because it's cute and it matches my top. This was completely unplanned but it's completely matched. Anyways, we're gonna go to a cafe for a light breakfast. We're just gonna eat some fun and some coffee, drink some coffee. So. At the dawn of our second day, we leapt out of our beds again and headed to Cafe Light, situated right across from Songsan Iljubong and just a two minute walk away from yesterday's Cafe Oda. Once again, there were so so many beautiful places to choose from. The cafe also has a very warm and open feel thanks to the floor-to-ceiling windows that let natural light and of course, the unforgettable view stream in. I opted for their sausage bread since I was craving something savory for breakfast and I also got their passion fruit aid. Their sausage bread fulfilled my craving but it was the passion fruit aid that really stood out to me. It was very simple but I loved eating the fresh passion fruit seeds underneath. After breakfast, we would go on to take a ferry across the sea and explore Udo Island. Since this is technically a separate island from the mainland, I will be posting a dedicated video on this and will include a link once posted in this video's cards and the description box. Please go and check it out once it's posted. It was probably my favorite out of all three days on the island and you will not regret spending an entire day there for yourself.
So now let's venture into day 3. It started with something I had never done before and that was picking oranges. And not just any normal oranges you get from the supermarket. Jeju is actually well known for their tasty orange varieties which thrive off of the island's temperate climate. Hence the orange hats and the other orange themed goods sold throughout the island as well. There are many orange picking farms scattered throughout Jeju but this is the one we went to since it was quite near our pension. We were given a pair of clippers and then we were off. The owner himself walked us out to the back where the oranges were grown and gave us a tutorial on how to properly harvest them. Might I add, this place actually offered an all-you-can-eat deal while you're on the grounds. So our goal was to eat so much that our fingers would turn orange from the peel. Good morning everyone. <laughs> it's Miss Han Lebong back again. We are now in an orange orchard. The Sajang Lim just, sh the boss, the owner, just like um, showed, escorted us here and he's gone now. We're, we're the only ones here in the whole orchard so it's very, it's very nice. So let's now find the one. I'm still trying to find the one Hanabong. Okay, wait, is this Hanabong? Is this considered Hanabong? I don't know. It's my family. I'm trying to find, <laughs> I'm trying to find my family member. I still haven't picked my first one so let's go find one. It doesn't look nice <laughs> on the side. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll try. We'll see how it is. Whenever I like rip the skin, there's just like a mm. spray. It's good. It's more diluted than than the first one you ate, mm. but it's good. It's I not sour. I think it's a bit harder now. Mm. Let's see. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy halaboom. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Once you're done eating to your heart's content, remember to bring the clippers back to the storefront and pay for any oranges that you would want to take home away from the grounds. Now, I will take this time to let you know that Jeju buses, especially in the less touristy areas, tend to come sparingly. Some of the most rural areas will have buses that stop running before 10pm or sometimes even earlier than that. So if you're taking the buses instead of renting a car, please research beforehand using apps like Naver or Kakao Maps. With that in mind, let us head to another iconic landmark in Jeju Island, the famous Oslok Tea Garden and Innisfree Jeju House. First, let's head over to Oslok Cafe. Oslok is the most prominent tea brand in South Korea and harvests its tea leaves straight from the plantations in Jeju as well. Walking past the storefront and going to the cashier, you can see that once again we have so many options to choose from, which seems to be a common theme with our trip here in Jeju. I chose their ever tempting Baumkuchen double green tea cake, topped with their signature green tea soft serve ice cream. Once you're finished tasting your treats, don't forget to go back to the storefront and buy yourself some Oselok tea. Besides being great souvenirs for yourself, they also make great gifts for your loved ones. My family loves tea, myself included, and I can tell you with full confidence that Oselok tea did not disappoint us. Just a few steps away was the main Innisfree Jeju house. Innisfree is a famous Korean skincare and beauty brand that centers itself around natural ingredients sourced directly from Jeju. Innisfree Jeju House is actually one of their stores which houses most of their products. And here you can also find some mini exhibitions about how they source their ingredients. A quick pan reveals the Innisfree Green Cafe with an extensive and delicious looking menu. They serve a wide variety of drinks and food which you can see conveniently immortalized on the window display to give customers a clearer picture of their menu items. We got one of each of their special picnic sets and I highly recommend ordering them for yourself. They're a great bang for the buck considering the variety of flavors in each set as well as the portion sizes which are great for sharing with one or two of your friends. We also got their tangerine and blueberry aid and just look how beautifully these are presented. I'm gonna try the with this. This is 
Seaweed or so seaweed? It's juicy. It's, it's worth it. Like 16,000? Yeah. Worth it. I like the prices in this cafe. Yeah. If they sell this one in Seoul, it yeah. may be like 24,000. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like this would be at least 8,000. Eight. Yeah. 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 I was going to say 12. 7, but 7 is too low. This is a good food. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is my first food. It's so tangerine. You lied to me. What? <laughs> We spent the rest of the evening walking the beautiful grounds and taking pictures at the sunset, making sure not to skip this iconic green sea field just behind the Innisfree Jeju house building. If you've ever searched about Jeju on social media, you've probably seen this iconic spot. But if you thought we were going to end the day peacefully under the sunset, you would be wrong because after the calm begins the storm. That's right, our next spot is the surprisingly very exciting Jeju Dongwon Traditional Market. This is the market of Jeju, being the island's largest and oldest market. It is lively, full of people, and of course, full of food. The best thing about this is that it's a street food market, a seafood market, and a night market all in one place. Past the street food stalls, there are also some smaller shops selling little snacks like rice cake. Of course, the constant but welcome presence of everything orange related is a pleasant reminder that we are, indeed, still in Jeju. They've got accessories, orange gift sets, and an adorable cat who decided the best place to groom itself was on top of said gift sets. There's also an abundance of both fresh and dried seafood, taking me back to my childhood memories in the Philippines with their wet markets as well. However, perhaps the most exciting section, particularly for tourists, would be their street food section. It was very loud, very crowded, and a lot of fun in this food-filled area. This particular barbecue stall was hogging all of the attention, including mine. Props to the cooks and the servers who kept this insane energy up all night for the customers. Also, for those of you who like pork, Jeju is famous for the black pig breed and it's a name fitting for its unique black hair. It is also said to be more flavorful than regular pork, so go ahead and try it inside the market or throughout the many barbecue restaurants scattered around Jeju. Even though we're ending on an exciting note, it was with a full heart and a full stomach that I had to reluctantly bid goodbye to the beautiful island that is Jeju. I hope this video inspires you to book your own trip to Jeju. If you have any travel buddies you'd like to go with, please share this video with them and give this a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. My heart is legitimately filled with joy when I make these videos, and your support will enable me to make more travel videos in the future. As always, thank you, and see you soon on the next adventure.